If you're trying to buy a $350 GPU from Nvidia right now, your option is the RTX 3060. And we'll talk about why that might be a bad idea in general when we look at the competition, but even if you're set on the 3060, notice that there's eight gigabyte models and 12 gigabyte models, and a lot of times they cost about the same. And so don't get ripped off on that, and it's not just the VRAM, it actually performs worse. The 12 gigabyte model is the model that launched with the 3060 launch, and much later on, Nvidia kind of silently updated to offer an 8 gigabyte version, which not only has less VRAM, the memory actually runs at, on a slower bus, uh, so basically it actually performs worse in many games, and noticeably so. And I will be reviewing the 12 gigabyte model in this video, and don't get ripped off there. Now, if you want to look at the AMD options, uh, the, the, at this price point, if we sort prices low to high, the RX 6700 XT costs about the same from AMD, which is why I'm comparing it against the 3060 and not against something like the 3060 Ti. The 3060 Ti, lowest prices I can find right now are a little over $400, and I will do a future video comparing those, but right now I'm looking at if you're buying at $350, these are pretty much the competitors. And then if you're trying to say the 6700 XT should go up against something like a 3070, well, the 3070 is $540 right now if I was trying to buy today. So yeah, anyway, if, you, if you're if you still concerned about the high prices of GPUs, by the way, you should think about selling your current GPU to fund the upgrade. And the best prices can be had at jawa.gg, today's sponsor. Now, uh, they have a couple of options here. If you want a hassle-free and no need to wait on a buyer option, you can sell directly to jawa.gg. You tell them their G your GPU model and condition, they give you a price immediately, you ship your GPU to Jawa, they receive it, inspect it, and pay you immediately. Now, if you'd rather set your own price and manage the listing more like you were doing something like eBay, they offer that option as well, where you, you create your listing, choose your price, gamers buy your graphics cards, you ship out the card within three business days and get paid two days after the buyer receives the GPU, but why would you sell on, on Jawa instead of eBay if you were going to choose that option? Well, you get to keep more of your money. They have some of the lowest fees on the market, they all also still have strong seller protections, and they're a more gamer-friendly, PC part-focused company. Uh, so seriously consider funding your upgrade on Jawa.gg. Now, these specific GPU models that I'm doing in this video, I think I actually have pictures of them right here, uh, and, and here's the box. This is the 3060 I have. It's actually the Asus ROG Strix version, so the cooler on this one is absolutely overbuilt. And the 6700 XT is actually just the reference model, uh, which doesn't have the most amazing cooler. It will get the job done. Uh, so honestly, the cooler model's a little bit unfair, but these are the two models that I happen to have. Just don't get too hung up on the temperature differences you see in the video. Anyway, let's get to the benchmarks and give you some final thoughts at the end. A massive number of new AAA games are going to be switching to Unreal Engine 5 for future installments, so let's test it out here in the only game where we currently can, Epic's own Fortnite. Now, that's why we're running this at such high settings. Currently, we are at Epic settings with the hardware accelerated ray tracing off, although the software accelerated Lumen uh, ray tracing is still on. That's why we get this really nice lighting here. Uh, also, we want to test out new features like Nanite, which allows these trees to fade in without all the level of detail popping, uh, virtual shadow maps, things like that. Uh, if you look at the performance here, though, neither of them is staying consistently above 60 FPS. If you see the three frame rate count, the one on the left is the current frame rate, the one in the middle is the average for the duration of the benchmark run, and the one on the right is the 1% lows. Uh, here we see the 6700 XT averaging close to 60, but more like the upper 50s, and the 3060 12GB is down at 41 FPS average currently. Uh, overall, I ended up with a 41% lead for the 6700 XT over the 3060 in this testing. And again, this is with the hardware accelerated ray tracing turned off. The lumen lighting system uh, can be hardware accelerated, and what this does is it increases the accuracy a little bit, and that's what we're turning on here. So this is with the hardware accelerated uh, lumen turned on. That's one of the options in the menu, and it just has an on-off switch. And so we're still at the epic settings. Here we see the 6700 XT with a 20% lead over the 3060. So as expected, NVIDIA accelerates ray tracing with a smaller penalty to its overall frame rate, although the 6700 XT had such a massive lead in the first place. 
uh, that it still has a 20% lead even with this enabled. However, later on, we'll test out more demanding ray tracing than this, and we'll see that that lead, you know, that advantage can be pushed further in other games. If you're looking at the temperature differences, keep in mind that the cooler model you buy will have a big impact on that. The 3060 I'm using here is an ROG Strix cooler, which is about as good as you can get, and it's kind of ridiculous for the card. Uh, and I'm using a 6700 XT reference model. So honestly, we're giving the 3060 a pretty big advantage in terms of cooler models here. That's just the two that I have. Anyway, um, now we're looking at the high settings. Since neither of them were getting 60 FPS at the uh, epic settings, let's go down to the high settings. That's as low as you can go and still keep the Unreal Engine 5 features like Lumen and Nanite and virtual shadow maps. This is with the RT on though. Here we see the 6700 XT with a 27% lead, even with the hardware accelerated ray tracing. Now, uh, the 3060 is averaging a little over 60 FPS, about 63 here, but the 6700 XT is averaging around 80 FPS with even its 1% lows at 67 FPS. So even with the hardware ray tracing turned on, once we go down to settings that they're both you know, over 60 FPS at, uh, the 6700 XT has a pretty large lead here. Now, if we go down to the high settings with the RT off, uh, both of them do even better, although the 6700 XT, again, scales even better without RT, now with a 46% lead. Although I will mention, as I'm putting up on the side of the screen there, that the shadows look a bit different here. I'm running a replay back through the uh, the engine here, but for some reason it looks like sometimes the sun is in a different position, so the shadows look a little bit different. So hopefully that's not having too much of an impact on the overall performance, but this is the best you can do here. This is the only game I can use to test Unreal Engine 5, and there is no built-in benchmark. You just kind of have to use a replay of a game uh, that runs through the engine, so that's all good, but you can see some pretty big differences in the shadowing in some of these scenes. Uh, but either way, uh, we are seeing a 46% lead um, for the 6700 XT here, so even if the, the location of the sun made a small difference, I don't think it would you know, be a 46% difference. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's jump up to 1440p. Both of these GPUs are strong enough to consider using at 1440p, although probably not at maximum settings in the most demanding titles. So that's why I'm testing 1440p at the high settings here uh, with the hardware acceleration uh, ray tracing turned off. At these settings, the 6700 XT has a 37% lead over the 3060, and the 6700 XT is averaging in the mid 60 FPS range. Uh, whereas the 3060 is only averaging in the upper 40s. So, you know, they're both playable, although in a shooter like this, you would definitely um, probably want to be uh, more in that uh, 60 and over range. Although, again, I'm trying to use this as a stand-in for just Unreal Engine 5 in general, although one game really can't tell you how all games in the engine will perform. Uh, but either way, it looks like you'll definitely need to turn down settings a bit at 1440p. Now, another option um, is to use upscaling. Since the 3060 wasn't hitting 60 FPS yet, I thought, well, what if we stay at the high settings? Because if I go down to medium, it turns off the things I'm trying to test, like Lumen and Nanite and all of that. Uh, so if we stay at the high settings, I actually kicked hardware accelerated ray tracing on along with DLSS at the quality setting, and now the 3060 can average a little over 60 FPS, kind of the mid-60 mid range. Uh, definitely with some dips below 60, though. But at these same settings, um, the 6700 XT is up averaging around 77, although I shouldn't really say the same settings. I'm upscaling at the quality settings with the same resolution, but in this game, there's no FSR. Uh, so you have to use TSR, the Temporal Super Resolution Upscaler, built into the engine. And I will say, I think DLSS looks a bit sharper here, especially in motion. So there's an advantage there. And the 6700 XT is at a 20% lead there. Now, uh, just to show what happens if you did try to max out the settings at 1440p on these GPUs, um, we see that if you just crank it to epic settings 1440p with hardware accelerated ray tracing enabled, the 6700 XT has a 21% 20, uh, lead, but neither one is doing great. Although if you're using this as stand-in for maybe not a shooter, not Fortnite specifically, but you know a more demanding future game, if you capped it at 30 FPS, the 6700 XT could do it, but the 3060 is below 30 FPS, really not offering a great experience here. Um, but I think what we're really seeing is that neither of these GPUs is going to be a max it out and forget it 1440p GPU uh, if you're shooting for above 30 FPS in the most demanding new titles. 
So let's explore ray tracing a little bit further. We're gonna look at a whole bunch of different ray tracing settings. I like to use Cyberpunk as my ray tracing benchmark because it has a lot of uh, a very scalable settings. Um, it also features upscaling like DLSS and FSR, which we're not using at the ray tracing low settings here, but we will definitely use. Um, and it's just one of the games that people actually want to use ray tracing in usually. Now the ray tracing low settings that we're looking at here, it's basically the game's normal ultra preset, but then you enable uh, local shadows. So I'm gonna be honest, I don't think the local shadows are mind blowing, but what I wanted to show here is that with a light ray tracing workload at 1080p, this is definitely at 1080p, uh, both GPUs can give you around a 60 FPS, well, the 3060 can give you around a 60 FPS average, a little bit above, and the 6700 XT is actually averaging in the mid-70s with a 21% lead. So, uh, again, that's not as big of a lead as we saw when we're not using ray tracing. But with ray light ray tracing workloads like we saw in Unreal Engine 5, um, we actually do still have a lead for the 6700 XT. However, once you go to the ray tracing medium settings, um, they're actually exactly tied. I mean, there's some small differences. You maybe graph a look at the 1% lows and from second to second, but the overall averages for the duration of the benchmark run are tied. Although that means that both GPUs are averaging kind of in the, in the mid to upper 30s in the more demanding areas. Uh, so I enabled upscaling. Now this game features both DLSS and FSR2, so I used those respectively, and that's what you're seeing on the right-hand side of the screen. And both, both of them boosted their frame rate to the um, mid to upper 50s in a lot more scenes. However, you know, we're still not locking 60 or anything like that, but you might consider that performance usable. Although I don't really like upscaling at 1080p myself. I don't I don't think the image quality trade-off is worth it, although I will say I do think DLSS at this low resolution does upscale a bit better than FSR2 does. Um, now the ray tracing medium setting has the local shadows, sun shadows, and the medium lighting setting. There's still no reflections and it's not cranking the lighting. If we go up to the ray tracing ultra setting, we now have enabled the reflections on top of the local shadows and the sun shadows, and um, it has the lighting turned up to the ultra setting. Now the lighting can also even go up to a uh, psycho setting that it doesn't enable, but we're working the GPUs hard enough here already as it is. Um, with these settings, we do finally see the 3060 pull ahead with a 15% lead, both with, with and without upscaling. Um, it did seem to, to scale evenly there. Now, um, neither one of them is doing great here, especially at the native settings where they are uh, definitely below 30 FPS a lot of the time, although the 3060 does a better job of at least averaging 30 FPS. With upscaling enabled at the quality setting, again, DLSS and FSR2, um, you know, they're more playable with the 6700 XT in the mid 40s and the 3060 in the mid 50s. Personally, again, I don't think the trade-off there is worth it for uh, hitting these settings, but I did want to test them out uh, just so you guys could see what you get, and that the harder ray tracing workload uh, does finally get the 3060 to pull ahead of the 6700 XT. However, you just could play the game without ray tracing enabled. And if we do that, then we see at 1080p Ultra, the 6700 XT has a 29% lead over the 3060, although both of them are performing very well, and the game looks really good just at the ultra settings without any ray tracing enabled. And so, honestly, my preference with GPUs at this performance tier is, you know, it, I'd rather be staying at the native 1080p and above 60 FPS much of the time. Uh, here we see the 3060 can average in the, in the low 70 FPS range, and the 6700 XT is up over 90 FPS, average for the benchmark run. And in a first person shooter, I think that's pretty meaningful. I think 90 actually feels a lot better than 70 when you're in a first person shooter. Um, but what if we jumped up to 1440p? If you try to just max it out at 1440p, we can see the 3060 struggling but playable. Uh, it's in the mid 40 FPS range a lot of the time. Um, but the 6700 XT is closer to 60 FPS a lot of the time and does get, get around a 60 FPS average for the benchmark run. And the 6700 XT is showing a 36% lead over the 3060 at 1440p Ultra, uh, which is larger than the lead we saw at 1080p, which is interesting because a lot of times um, 
NVIDIA GPUs scale better at the higher resolutions uh, with these architectures, but that's not what we're seeing here. So there it is. Now, personally, I wouldn't have used those settings, especially on the 3060. I think turning down settings makes sense in this game quite a bit. Um, so one option is to go down to high and enable uh, DLSS on the 3060. Otherwise, you're still below 60 a lot of the time, and that's what we're seeing on the left-hand side here. I compared the 6700 XT with the high settings with FSR2 on the left-hand side, and it came out with a 24% lead this time. Um, but both of them averaging m much uh, higher performance. The 6700 XT up over 90 FPS a lot of the time. The 3060 over 70 FPS a lot of the time. And the uh, right-hand side of the screen is saying if you don't want to use any upscaling, you know, a lot of people are more sensitive to the little uh, aliasing and, and motion things you get from that. If you want to stay at the native 1440p, if you go down to the medium settings, the 3060 actually still doesn't quite average 60 FPS, uh, whereas the 6700 XT is uh, averaging in the upper 70 FPS range here with a 37% lead at the native 1440p medium settings. Uh, so pretty, uh, pretty interesting results there, but let's pop into another game. Returnal is a PS5 exclusive that has finally made its way to PC recently. It's developed in Unreal Engine 4, and I've got to say I've started playing this uh, since it came out and benchmarked it, and I'm really enjoying this game. Didn't look like it had a huge amount of PC sales, so I'm just going to put in a little pitch here. I get that this isn't for everyone. It's a roguelike, meaning when you die, you lose most of your progress, although there's certain items and things that, that do carry over. So it's not for everybody, but I thought it was really great. Anyway, at 1080p epic settings, both GPUs are doing great. Uh, the 3060 is averaging around 69 nice FPS with the 6700 XT at 92 FPS. Uh, as we close into the end of the benchmark run here. I didn't show you the whole benchmark run because it's fairly long. Also, this game has an excellent benchmark. Like, it shows you so many stats at the end of it, and um, it can even show you your frame per second difference between the last time you ran it at different settings. Anyway, it's really cool. At 1440p epic, uh, the 6700 XT is still able to average over 60 FPS, but the 3060 definitely drops below although it's playable, this is definitely a game where you want to stay at a high frame rate to dodge all the lasers and everything. So um, uh, on the right-hand side, I did test out uh, turning on DLSS for the 3060. You could have also just turned down settings, but using DLSS quality here it does look pretty good at 1440p and does get you over 60 FPS, closing in very close to the performance of the 6700 XT. Uh, my percentage difference I'm showing you, of course, is the apples to apples comparison of the 1440p Epic Native, where, where you see the 6700 XT with a 33% lead over the 3060. Um, and I, I also think it's interesting that even with DLSS enabled, the 3060 is still a little bit slower than the 6700 XT at native performance there. So uh, if you're thinking, you know, but I'll just always use DLSS, well, you know, it still wasn't winning there. <laughs> now, speaking of not winning, um, Call of Duty is a standout title for AMD performance-wise. And here we can see the uh, 1080p balanced settings. Now, I'm not using the extreme settings here because I think in a competitive multiplayer game, most people turn down some settings in order to increase their competitive edge with a higher frame rate. And speaking of the competitive edge with the higher frame rate, the 6700 XT is leading by 45% here. Uh, its average is well over 160 uh, FPS, closing in close to 170 FPS here towards the end of the benchmark. The 3060 is doing well. It's it's over 117 FPS, 116 FPS for most of the time. Um, but it's certainly a win for AMD, and I've noticed this in general, AMD performs very well in this game. Uh, but it is a popular game. A lot of people play this, including the Warzone 2, which runs on the same engine. So if you're more interested in the Warzone side of things, keep in mind that the GPU scaling is very similar. That's just harder to test. It's easier to use this built-in benchmark run that I'm doing here. Um, but in the Warzone mode, you're more likely to be uh, running into CPU limitations at times, uh, given how many players there are. So just keep that in mind for the overall performance in Warzone. But anyway, uh, here if we go up to 1440p balanced settings, so once again, it's, it's 1440p, but still it turned down settings a bit. Uh, we're now seeing the 6700 XT with a 53% lead, so scaling even higher here. The 6700 XT is... 
uh, still averaging close to 130 FPS, even at 1440p balanced. Um, whereas the 3060 is still very, very playable, uh, but now in more like the 84 FPS range. So definitely um, consider going the AMD route if you're going with uh, Call of Duty being where you spend most of your time. However, let's jump into another game. How about Plague Tale Requiem at 1080p ultra native on the left? And I noticed that the 3060 was not staying above 60 FPS in the more demanding areas. You'll see in some of these close-up shots in the cutscenes, the performance not as demanding. When the camera pans out, especially when we get into the actual gameplay camera, uh, the 3060 was well below 60. So I tried kicking on DLSS quality, and that helped it stay closer to 60 FPS, although still a little bit below it. And again, almost caught up to the 6700 XT. Uh, well, just about a tie there, um, but that's DLSS versus native. Uh, the 6700 XT has a 29% lead at native performance, and if we go up to 1440p Ultra, the 6700 XT has a 32% lead, um, but neither GPU is delivering amazing performance at these settings, although the 3060, you know, is... is over 30 FPS, the 6700 XT is over 40 FPS in the more demanding actual gameplay scenes, but this game doesn't really require uh, super high FPS, honestly. You'd probably play it on a controller, you know, and the console's locked to 30 in that game. By the way, Plague Tale was a custom engine, it's not using Unreal Engine. Jumping to the Callisto Protocol, we see uh, another Unreal Engine 4 game. And this one is uh, only giving us a 20% lead for the 6700 XT at 1080p Ultra. But um, this actually is an AMD-sponsored title, although it gives us one of our smaller leads for the AMD GPU, so go figure. Um, both, uh, both of them are averaging over 60 FPS, although the 3060, 3060 only by a little bit. Uh, the 6700 XT averaging uh, more like a little over 70 FPS, and they both have some pretty big dips in that benchmark run. Uh, so when I went up to 1440p, I went down to the medium settings because this little hallway right here, the, this, I'll just call it the corridor of death, um, it really takes frame rates. To, so to keep the 3060 above 30 FPS through this area, I wanted to go down to medium instead of ultra. Um, and same thing, the 6700 XT um, still didn't stay over 60 during that, that hallway. Although once we get out of that hallway, um, they're both averaging over 60 FPS or around 60 F I mean, the 3060 is closer to 60 FPS and the 6700 XT uh, a little bit over 80 FPS average, and the 6700 XT with a 25% lead over the 3060. And you could have also used upscaling here, although uh, it's FSR 2 only. Uh, it doesn't feature DLSS. Atomic Heart is also developed in the Unreal Engine and just came out recently. And it looks very good, and it's very scalable down to lower settings, although at 1080p, both of them can run at the atomic settings, which is the maximum preset, and the 3060 does average over 60 FPS here, uh, with the 6700 XT averaging more like 78 FPS, uh, with a 27% lead over the 3060 at these settings. Now, this game, I have mixed feelings about this game. Uh, the, the dialogue isn't going to be for everybody. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Um, the overall setting and everything like that is pretty interesting, though. If we jump up to 1440p at the maxed out atomic settings, the 6700 XT is able to average around 60 FPS, whereas the 3060 drops down into the mid-40 FPS range. Um, with the 6700 XT having a 32% lead. On the right-hand side, I'm showing that if the 3060 drops down to the high settings, it is able uh, to get close to a 60 FPS average. Uh, other options would be to use DLSS or both, or drop settings even further, but it's certainly a playable game at 1440p on the 3060. You just have to turn down settings a little bit. And... Um, the 6700 XT, in this case, if you're going for 60 FPS, you could have just left it maxed out. Uh, let's finish up with Forza Horizon 5, which isn't really as new as it used to be, but uh, let's go ahead and just test out 1440p at the Extreme preset. I'm not going to bother with 1080p, because even at 1440p Extreme, the 3060 is well over 60 FPS, and the mid-60s average in the benchmark run. The 6700 XT is averaging... Um, over 80 FPS, and it has a 26% lead 
over the 3060 here in this game. This is a game where AMD used to have an even larger lead, um, so that's one reason why I wanted to show it, is that back in, I think, October, uh, NVIDIA updated to uh, support resizable bar here, and that did help their performance quite a bit. So if we're looking at straight up gaming performance, the benchmarks speak for themselves. In almost every situation, the RX 6700 XT is meaningfully and noticeably faster for about the same price. Both cards have 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Once again, do not accidentally buy the eight gigabyte 3060 unless you know what you're doing and you found some like much, much, much cheaper price for that. Uh, the tw they're both 12 gigabytes. Um, now there are some feature differences. You know, there's the NVIDIA ray tracing advantage, but as we saw in my in-depth ray tracing comparison, while AMD loses more performance when you turn on ray tracing, if you start with a massive performance lead, that means that, uh, you know, at lighter ray tracing workloads, uh, the 6700 XT is still faster. At medium ray tracing workloads, they're basically tied, and it's only when you really crank the ray tracing settings that the 3060 starts to have a noticeable lead. Now, there's also uh, other features like DLSS versus FSR. I do think that the DLSS upscaling looks a little bit better than FSR2, but it's not a massive difference. And if you're buying these at 1080p, I think the 6700 XT is strong enough that you probably won't even need to be wanting to upscale at that resolution. If you're buying at 1440p, then I think the 6700 XT is again strong enough that you might not need to turn down as many settings or upscale as much. Although in the latest most demanding titles, I think even the 6700 XT is probably not going to be a max all the settings GPU unless you're wanting to play well below a 60 FPS. Um, the RTX 3060 is definitely a GPU you can buy for 1440p gaming, but it's already having to turn down settings significantly and or upscale using DLSS. Now at 1440p, I think the image quality difference between the upscaling techniques is smaller. Um, I think the higher the resolution goes, the less the differences are easier, uh, are, you know, noticeable. That being said, I do still think that DLSS looks a bit better than FSR2 even at 1440p quality. However, again, we saw in a lot of examples that the 3060 needs DLSS quality just to catch up to the performance of the 6700 XT, um, whereas the 6700 XT could just be rendering at na native resolution. And if you're one of the people who thinks or have heard that DLSS looks better than native resolution, that's in isolated circumstances or games with really bad TAA implementations. Uh, if you actually look at games happening in motion and in a variety of scenes in the game, uh, in general, I would usually turn DLSS off if I didn't need the performance, meaning if it was just an image quality thing, I usually prefer the native image over DLSS, um, unless, like I said, the game has a very, very, very bad implementation of t temporal anti-aliasing. So, uh, long story short, I've got to say I would get the 6700 XT if it's just for straight up gaming. Now, if you use your computer for work and gaming, or especially if work is your primary, con primary concern, then you want to look at the apps application support for AMD versus NVIDIA in the professional applications that you use. Because NVIDIA has a larger market share, many applications are programmed with NVIDIA hardware acceleration in mind first. That's not to say that there aren't many that work extremely well or even better on AMD, but I think in general, if you're gonna randomly pick a widely used productivity app, uh, odds are it is better supported on NVIDIA. But like I said, that different people's workloads are different, so you wanna look up those reviews separately for your particular use cases. Uh, there's also things, you know, like, you know, driver repu reputation for drivers and stability and all of that. And that's difficult for one reviewer to quantify um, versus, you know, just all the anecdotal evidence that you see in the world. So take that for what it is. Um, I've got to say, if I was choosing between the two, I would buy the 6700 XT. It's just noticeably faster for the same price in gaming, and my primary uh, use case would be gaming. Again, to fund the upgrade, you could take a look at selling your current GPU on Jawa.gg. Also, they do sell the new and used GPUs there, so you could take a look there if you're looking for your purchase. I hope all of you have an excellent day, and thank you for today's sponsor.